Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. Uh, it seems to be that time of year again uh, when my inbox, my Instagram, my comments are kind of flooded with requests to help Eugenia Cooney, to address Eugenia Cooney, to come up with ideas or strategies for being able to save her. Uh, I first and foremost want to say I so appreciate the genuine care and concern behind those requests and behind a lot of people's intentions within you know the wider youtube community to try to reach and help eugenia i think it's really beautiful i think some of it's misguided and naive but i think the genuine care is wonderful and an energy we could really use in eating disorder awareness spaces for sure of course there are the cynical kind of uses of Eugenia uh, and there's quite a bit of that but it's certainly not the majority from what I've seen so I just want to acknowledge that before I fairly bluntly say what I have to say and have said in former videos but maybe I haven't said it this bluntly before so I think that as I've stated previously a lot of the attempts to help Eugenia are naive uh, the majority of people even if you've had a lived experience of an eating disorder uh, could never understand Eugenia's specific situation. We just can't. I'm someone, for context, who recovered from anorexia binge purge subtype years ago and have been working with eating disorder recovery clients as a coach for the last three and a half years. I've helped people to fully recover. It's the greatest joy of my life. It is, also gives me some insight. It doesn't give me insight into Eugenia's specific situation. Point one. Eating disorders are super, super complex just in and of themselves on their own. They are one of the most complicated psychiatric illnesses. And I can tell you from both sides of the fence, someone who was in one and someone who helps to treat them from the outside, they're really, 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 really hard to overcome. They can be overcome. Absolutely. I believe that that is absolutely the truth and they can be fully overcome. But it's hard work. It's really, really, really hard. And it's made harder based on our support system, based on our uh, particular mental health challenges outside of the eating disorder. We may have anxiety. We may have depression. There may be comorbidities. It's made more difficult depending on our access to treatment, our family situation, our home situation. There are so many different variables which make recovery that much more challenging, which we can see with Eugenia. But as far as the mental illness itself, it is not just about food. It is not just about the body. For a lot of people, it's a coping mechanism in response to trauma, in response to abuse, in response to uh, bullying that they may have experienced. It could be a combination of all of those things. For some people, it's a coping mechanism because of uh, comorbidities with other mental illnesses or physical illnesses. They are so, so complicated. We don't just feed people and restore their health and go, you're done. These things can take years to recover from because they are mental illnesses with physical symptoms. And all we're doing is commenting on her physical symptoms. That's not what the real struggle is. That's not where the real work is done. So that's the first thing. Eating disorders are seriously complicated. And unless you have walked in the shoes or you understand their mechanisms and how they operate, they are very, very, very hard to empathize with. They are because you you can't understand the upside down nature of the world that you live in when you're in an eating disorder. The second complication with the Eugenia scenario is her, as I understand it, from what I do know, from what you guys have told me and what I've tried to verify, she has a seriously, seriously complicated home life, family life, and therefore support system. Even if Eugenia, which she has stated repeatedly, flat out denial that there is even a problem or, and that she needs or wants help or has any intention of pursuing help, even if she was open to it, the nature of her support system and her home life would make that extremely challenging. Not impossible, but extremely challenging. Now, point one and point two are things that we can all kind of understand, right? We can all kind of put ourselves in that headspace. I can. Uh, I certainly can. I recovered 
living out of home as a 25 year old, had to do a lot of the uh, leg work for want of a much better phrase myself, uh, making myself eat, making myself go to appointments, making myself do the work every day was really up to me. So it can be done. Obviously the difference being I had wonderful support from afar, but the day to day that was up to me. What none of us can understand, what I will even never understand is her third complication, which is that this is all happening on the internet. She is going through a severe and chronic eating disorder on the internet with a crusade of people hating, helping, being concerned, leaving comments, disliking her videos, starting up entire Reddit forums. I don't even, I'm too old. I don't know how Reddit works. I'll be totally transparent with you. I've had this stuff sent to me. Um, Tracking her every move, her appearance, how she looks from this angle and that angle. Do you know what eating disorders do? That. (laughs) The way the community is analyzing and deconstructing and pulling apart and some abusing and some you know jumping up with concern that's what eating disorders do they get stuck in the minutia of appearance and illness and food and body and clothes and body check then to have that echoed back to you i can't even imagine what that would be like That is the part in all of this that breaks my heart for her. Even as I sit here knowing, and I'll say it this bluntly, I can't help her, you can't help her. That is the truth for that reason. That eating disorders, whether they are receiving positive or negative attention, don't really care as long as they are backing up what the eating disorder is saying, which is that everyone is focused on her appearance. Everyone is telling her she doesn't look well, that she's about to die, which is exactly what the eating disorder wants to hear. You are not getting to Eugenia. Eugenia is not the one. If she is intentionally making that, all of that content, like I saw the panty flashing thing and the body checking stuff, You're not talking to Eugenia when you criticize or raise concern about that content. You are talking to her eating disorder and it is loving it. That's the truth. That is why her particular situation is so complicated. Do I believe she can't recover? I absolutely believe that she can recover. I believe everyone can. Here is the important stipulation. Everybody can recover and not everybody will. That is the truth. Even if we could get everyone access to care and we could fix the abysmal state of funding and uh, treatment and awareness, even if we could click our fingers and it could all change tomorrow, everyone would not recover. Because ultimately, we can force someone to physically restore, but unless they are prepared to take ownership and to be invested in their recovery process, then we can't get them as far as we need them to go. You can get people part of the way and we can drag them there really reluctantly, but unless they take the ownership of their process, and I believe this so firmly, I really do. And all of that with the caveat of acknowledging that a lot of that comes down to uh, not being able to access care. I totally get that. You don't need to tell me that after over eight years of being an advocate. I get it. But at some point in the recovery process, whatever that recovery process looks like, whether you're doing it on your own with no treatment, which people do, Carolyn Coston, fully recovered, never had treatment, Uh, whether you're doing it with a psychologist or you do go to inpatient, at some point, the lead needs to be taken by you. And we currently have someone who is in complete denial about her eating disorder or about any need for intervention or recovery. Until she gets there, she will not embark on recovery. And if she continues to receive feedback, which is 
absolutely making the eating disorders day, which is you saying, I'm worried for you, which is you saying, you look like you're going to die, which is you saying horrifically insulting things to her, which I will never understand how anyone does that to anyone on the internet. Uh, it's not, that's not the avenue. That's not going to get her there because you're not talking to her. So that's the bluntness of this video. Everyone can recover. Eugenia can recover. Not everybody will. And ironically, the way in which people are trying to reach her and get her to a point of being open to recovery or access to recovery is not helping her. It's not about whether or not reaching out to her is right or wrong, good or bad. It's whether or not it's effective and I can confidently say, and we can see this crusade's been happening for years. It is not helping. She, in fact, has become more chronic. She hasn't plateaued. She hasn't gone into quasi. She has become more chronic. It is not helping. The only thing that can help now is intervention from her immediate support system is intervention from herself and an openness and willingness to pursue recovery. That's it. Again, I want to reinforce and reassert, I think that it is beautiful that people care so much about this person and that people are so devastated by how devastating eating disorders are. I would beg you to please take that energy away from Reddit forums analyzing her movement, analyzing every live stream, and please dedicate it to true eating disorder awareness. If you care about this girl, you should care about the millions of people, over a million Aussies over here, millions more in America, millions in the UK, millions all over the world. We know that they they spread far and wide. They are not just here in the West. We only really have stats here in the West. And even those stats aren't great because the research is terrible because the funding is terrible because people are putting their attention into awareness that is simply not productive. If you want to help Eugenia, help the systems which are failing her. If you have this kind of energy for Eugenia, you can have this kind of energy for the fundraising, the awareness raising, the legwork, the groundwork that it takes to really make institutional long-term change when it comes to eating disorder recovery and awareness. And we need it. We need it. Funding for eating disorders is terrible. Terrible. It's improving in certain parts of the world. Ours has improved over here in Australia in the last couple of years. And we've just opened our very first residential facility up in Queensland. And it was an absolute fight to get it opened. And we only have one. It's our only residential facility. We have hospital settings. We have one residential facility. So let's take this energy and help the people like Eugenia, who don't have the access, who don't have the support, whose support system are not appropriately responding and try to make institutional change with this kind of energy. As far as Eugenia and what I have to say to Eugenia, I don't have anything to say to Eugenia. Eugenia is not listening to me. She's not listening to you. She is listening to her eating disorder. And if I truly believed that this would help, I would be the first one to say, call to arms, let's flood her comments and dislike her videos and switch her off and, you know, record all her live streams and react to them. I would be the first one to get in line and say, let's do this. But the proof is in the pudding. It's not effective. It's not working. And from what I know as someone who went through it and now helps other people get out of it, if I had a client in Eugenia's position, I would be horrified for them. I would be really having to come up with strategies to help her manage and cope with that. Because on one hand, this is her outlet. This is her income. This is what makes it so complicated. Her eating disorder and she, the healthy part of her, are both incentivized to stay on the internet. Eating disorders are so isolating and so lonely. 
And from what we can see of this girl, there's not a lot of life going on outside of that room. This world is her world. So do we take away her only connection? Do we remove her from the only place where maybe she feels a genuine sense of uh, connection and doesn't feel so isolated? That's something I'm still not 100% on. I'm really not uh, because it is so, so complicated. But it does lead into a point I'm a little more confident in, which is people claiming, you know, she's responsible for triggering people and she should not be on the internet and this is, she's doing a terrible thing and that's her responsibility. And and this whole, I've also made my position on triggers really clear. Anyone who has an eating disorder who wants to go and be triggered will find ways to be triggered. Eugenia Cooney is just a really obvious way to get triggered, right? There is still a locus of control and responsibility, whether you have an eating disorder or you're in recovery, more so the latter. Eating disorders, it's a little harder to have a locus of control. I get it. But if you're in recovery and you are stumbling across Eugenia's uh, content, that's terrible. If you are revisiting her content and being triggered by it, that's where your locus of control comes in. There are steps you have to take and it's about how much you're aware and plugged into and actively intervening with your own behavior. That's a you thing, not a her thing. When it comes to whether or not she could just trigger someone into having an eating disorder, eating disorders are a little bit more complicated than that. Yes, we can be triggered by imagery, etc. An eating disorder we know more and more has a lot of you know, genetic factors. Uh, It also has a lot of environmental factors. Someone watching Eugenia's content alone is really not going to do it. Uh, It's really not going to be the thing that triggers an eating disorder. Uh, Again, naivety. If you really are worried about how people are triggered (laughs) into eating disorders, please, by all means, I'll leave some links below. There's some really good information out there. If you're really impassioned about stopping people from developing eating disorders, there are much more effective ways to do it than focusing on and targeting Eugenia Cooney. Uh, If you are a parent who is worried about your child stumbling across Eugenia Cooney's content, then you need to make sure that your children are not engaging with triggering uh, eating disorder content, just as you would hopefully on any other platform, just as you would be monitoring that on Instagram or YouTube. My heart goes out to any parent who is raising a child in the age of the internet. Holy moly, I'm not looking forward to that uh, (laughs) period of my life where that has to be another challenge in parenting. My heart goes out to you. But the idea that children are stumbling across this is very, very uh, possible, but it's not solely Eugenia's responsibility. And especially somebody who is as mentally unwell as she is, the locus of responsibility and control, we're putting an unfair uh, expectation on her. This girl is not well. I feel like in all the minutia of all the discussion about her, that's what gets lost. She is not well. Uh, Just as someone would be unwell with any other kind of mental illness or even a physical illness. Uh, this is how her illness expresses itself. And yes, unfortunately, she was a public person with a YouTube channel when it started to express itself in this way. I think in summary, there are certain things I'm still not totally clear on in terms of her level of responsibility being on the internet, YouTube's responsibility about having her on this platform and having her monetized. I mean, look, even I see the irony. I make eating disorder awareness and recovery videos and most of my videos get demonetized and hers do not. Uh, that's more of a, that's more YouTube's fault than it is Eugenia's fault. Uh, and yes, of course, something like that needs to be examined. What I am really clear on is that the way in which people are trying to help her, it's not a matter of, well, we're better off doing it than not doing it. No, the way it's being done is actively not helpful. It's not a matter of, well, I could do nothing or I could do this and it's better to do something. In this case, I truly don't believe it's better to do something. I think it is really, as we can see, when the concern ramps up, her uh, 
state of health declines. Uh, We've seen that pattern over and over and over again. We're also no longer living in a world where Eugenia hasn't had treatment and where people in her inner circle haven't intervened. That has now occurred, Uh, which is not to say that you just take one run at treatment and you're done, but it goes back to my previous point that At some point, Eugenia had to get with the program. She had to get on the page and thus far she hasn't. And until she does, there's just not an awful lot we can do. Now, I know that's not the answer people want to hear. I'm sure that's not the answer people want to hear from someone who's been through it and now helps people to get uh, through to the other side themselves. I understand that. It's the answer I have consistently given uh, on this subject. And it is because it is after years of observing uh, what is helpful and what isn't, uh, not only in my own story, but in many other people's stories as an advocate. And like I said, now someone helping people overcome eating disorders directly. Uh, it, It just isn't the answer. And the very sad fact is that sometimes there is no answer. Sometimes you are in a position of inaction because it is up to the other person. It would be like me showing up to session with a client every week and telling them I'll do the work for them. I'll be their motivation. I'll be their reason to recover. I'll pick up the fork for them. I'm not doing them any favors. They have to be on the page that they, in even the smallest measure, the tiniest percentage of them is willing to take some kind of ownership of this process. And until she gets there, you can't make her get there. So my suggestion is if it is harmful to you to watch her, do not watch. Uh, If leaving a comment is going to mean leaving concern that's going to fuel the eating disorder, abuse that's going to fuel the eating disorder, shock factor that's going to fuel the eating disorder, don't leave the comment. Uh, And to Put that energy that I am so thrilled to see around Eugenia's eating disorder and to redirect that into outlets which are going to help people like Eugenia and potentially Eugenia herself if we take that energy and we put it into more productive and constructive places in the overall eating disorder landscape. So that's really my two cents. Hasn't changed a lot, bit more blunt than last time. I absolutely expect that the comments are gonna be interesting on this one. I am prepared for that, uh, but I'm always here to give my honest insight and opinion and feedback. And even if it's not pretty, it will always be honest. So I'm sending you all a ton of love. Uh, I will see you very soon in another video, sending you all my best wishes, love, care, all the rest of it. We're about to, I think, go back into lockdown in Sydney. So thank God I have a full fridge and nothing to do this weekend. Uh, (laughs) I'm sending you all all my love. I'll see you soon. Bye.